I can't emphasize the importance of a proper warm-up. I mean, when you think about it, to go into a high-powered game, any sport, and not be properly prepared for it, you're running the risk of an injury. And I, I can't emphasize too much that a proper warm-up should take place before a game. And I'm not just talking about the professionals. I don't think it just applies to professional, professional people. I think it applies to everybody. It's no good coming out, as I say in football terms, at let's say two o'clock and doing a warm up till quarter past two, and then you're not going to start the game till three o'clock because you'll have lost all the benefit of that warm up. So the warm up needs to be as close as possible to the start of the game, the start of whatever sport you're playing. To make your warm up more effective, try to do moves that work and focus on a particular muscle group. Here you can see the participants doing heel flicks. That focuses on the hamstrings, so you could then follow the heel flicks with a hamstring stretch. Here the participants are doing basic shuttle runs, so after this you could follow it with the car stretch and then they're moving into side steps which focuses on inner thigh and groin. So the inner thigh and groin stretch would follow the side step move. We're now encouraging the participants to move all of the body instead of just the legs. So we get them to skip and asking them to move the arms and the legs as big as possible to act as a full body stretch. A good order for stretching would start at the bottom of the body working your way to the top. So starting with the calves, then the hamstrings, moving on to quads, then groin and upper body. Each stretch should be held for around about 10 seconds. A range of warm-up styles can be used through using a range of equipment. When using the equipment, it's best to make sure that you're not asking too much of your participants as it is still the warm-up. So we don't want to really put too much equipment in and make it too complex. Here we're using the ladders and all we're asking the participants to do is place one foot in between each of the yellow ladder markers trying to make sure they stay on their toes and making sure they're lifting their knees and moving their arms to make sure that there's minimal risk of them catching the ladders as they're moving through. The markers at each end just to make sure that the participants are moving around at a similar sort of speed just to keep the session under control. If you find your participants can do a one step in between each ladder quite easily, you can develop this so you are testing them but it's still not too complex. Here we're asking our participant to turn sideways on as they approach the ladder, still placing one foot in between each of the spaces in the ladder. The same rules apply in that they need to stay on their toes, lift the knees high and move the arms to make sure they're clearing all the spaces in the ladder and also making sure that it again is an effective warm-up for all the muscles in the body. Bringing a football into the warm-up will make it sport specific. Here, what we ask the participants to do is place the ball through the passing arc but still moving at the same time. So it's still classed as a warm-up and it's still at a pace which will mean that the heart rate will increase but not get too high. So as they're doing this, they're passing the ball. This can be done one or two touch depending on the ability level of your participants. And as they pass the ball, we're still asking that they're on their toes so they are moving continually. Where possible, make your exercises sport specific. So here, the ball has been introduced to encourage the participants to work as a team. We're using the boundary poles as targets to place the ball through for another participant to receive on the other side. This not only works on ball skills, but it also works on communication between your team. 